My brother and I have been car nuts since we can remember. And there's always been one car that, for my brother at least, has been the car. And it's been the Dino 246 for years and years and years. In high school, we actually decided to buy our first sort of sports car. And we, uh, together, we bought an Alfa Romeo Spider in the mid-1990s. And uh, we always dreamt about having a, a yellow Dino. So we painted the, the Alpha Spider in yellow and we enjoyed it. And you can imagine the relationship that my brother and I had that we, we shared that car for the better part of three years and didn't argue a single time about who was going to get to drive it. So for us, that was our little baby Dino and we really, really enjoyed it. With the Dino always being the car that we dreamed of, I would relentlessly go through the auto trader and see you know, what was available for sale. And I remember the one day in 1997, there was a Dino that had come up for sale locally in Toronto. I uh, called the dealership up and uh, despite the fact that I didn't have two nickels to rub together, I posed as a buyer and I got my nicest shirt and slacks on and I went and I took the car for a test drive. The whole process kind of took a little bit of time and that particular day, my brother was waiting for me. I was supposed to pick him up downtown. So I show up like an hour late and he's standing at the side of the road and I can see that he's furious with me. And as soon as I pull up and I tell him, Paul, I just drove a Dino. His face changed completely. His only interest in the world was to know all about it. It was everything that we dreamt of, just a fantastic car. Fast forward to around 2010, our business, he's my business partner, had, had done okay. And so I start nudging him along because I had already bought some, some cars that I dreamt of. And I said, hey, time to start looking at that Dino. We knew about a car that was local in Toronto. We knew the owner and we, we went and the owner was actually a friend of a very good friend of ours. And he had had the car for a while. We know he hadn't, he hadn't driven it in some time. And we approached him if he was interested in perhaps selling the car. He wasn't really quite sure if he wanted to sell it or not. But my brother and I went to go see him. And we looked at the car and we talked a little bit. And we managed to do a deal on the spot for the car. To be honest, I strong-armed my brother a little bit. And we, we kind of went in on it together and we, we bought this car. So I told the story of how I had gone to that dealership and posed to buy that car. Well, the ironic thing that actually happened was that that turned out to be the same car that we bought. And not only was it the same car that we bought, the salesman who showed me the car in the first place ended up brokering the deal for the private individual who held the car. So even though it was 13, 14 years later, <laughs> he ended up doing the sale. It was a real special moment. We started driving the car around a little bit because it was nearing the end of the season. And so we got a little bit of mileage under it. One of the things that we've always dreamt about was the potential of maybe restoring a car. We'd never really restored a car before, so how about we give it a try and this is the dream car, so might as well restore the dream car. And the plan originally was to restore the car a little bit at a time. So we would, didn't want to take it off the road for an entire summer. So every winter, the plan was to do a little bit of the restoration and eventually the whole car would be finished. Well, that plan fell apart in about the first two hours of this assembly. We had gotten the car, we picked it up, it was the beginning of winter, and we started taking some parts off. And I think that my brother and I looked at each other at about the same time and said, yeah, the only way to do this <laughs> is to take the whole car apart and go all the way. What ensued was a three and a half year, 7,000 man hour journey to try to do the best possible restoration that we could. And the work was primarily done by myself, my brother, and my dad. We would outsource a few things. We don't have the facilities to, to paint a car or to, or to do the, the interior work, but we have a, a workspace and we have tools and we started plugging away at it. One of the cool things about when we were doing the restoration of the car is that we were actually trying to dig up some of the history of the car. And we tracked down a number of the original owners. And interestingly, they were all kind of boring people that took no real interest in the fact that someone had contacted them, that a car of their youth had somehow emerged. So we were really surprised by that. But a pleasant surprise came in that we actually found the original salesman who sold the car. And he was a wonderful gentleman, and he was in his 90s. 
And one of the things that we did was we, on a, on a particular day, we found a number of other people that had cars that had been purchased or had been sold by him in period. And we amassed all those cars together. And we invited him. We picked him up at an, uh, at an old age home and we took him for a day out and invited him to see the car and reminisce and tell stories. And one of the things that unfortunately didn't get to happen is that he passed away before the car was finished. But a few months before he passed away, he contacted us and said, I, I have something I think you should have. We went to go see him and he gave us his original business card, his original paint samples, the original leather samples, brochures, everything that was from his desk. So we were able to reunite the car with all of the various dealership materials that would have followed that, that would have been original to that car uh, when that car was brand new. We started to blog our journey, if you will, and it became fairly popular. And the blog still exists on the internet and people use it as, as a reference point for, for the restorations. And we, we went along with this process and we just tried to do our very best. We were amateurs. We just tried to apply ourselves the best that we possibly can, learn as much as we could, and, and just improve in that process. And one of the things that would happen is we would restore a part, and maybe a year later, we would figure out a better way to do it. So we would go back and we would restore that part again. So on the day it was finished, it was the very, very best that us amateurs could do. Again, one of the things that the two of us had always dreamt about was, hey, you know, wouldn't it be something to restore a car, but actually have it properly judged just to see how did we do in the Ferrari world, the way to get a car judge is to take it to uh, an FCA Ferrari club of America meet, and they have a judging protocol. And in order to get the, the highest level of judging, you need to go to one of a handful of events a year. Actually, annually, there's only three events that you can go to. You can go to Cavallino, which is in January. You go to the Ferrari Club of America annual meet, or you go to Concorso Italiano. Now, in the particular year that we decided to enter, Concorso Italiano was on the same weekend as the Ferrari Club of America national meet. So they foregoed FCA judging in favor of uh, doing the FCA judging at the FCA national meet. So what we did was we grabbed our completed Dino and we shipped it to California because we're all the way in Canada. And we decided to show it at Concorso Italiano and then show it at the Ferrari Club of America national meet. And we were just interested to see how it did. So we're preparing for, we're getting the car all nice and clean. We have all the bits and pieces and everything that goes along with the car. And my brother and I are talking and we said, I mean, wouldn't it be something if we could show the car to Marcel Massini? Now, Marcel Massini is one of the world's leading authorities on vintage Ferraris. And we just thought it would be the most fantastic thing if we could be able to show him the car. And so we set the car up at Concorso Italiano and we're getting ready and the judges show up and wouldn't you guess, it was Marcel Massini was one of our judges. And it actually turned out to be a bit of a dream team of judges because it was Marcel Massini, Matthias Bartz, who is the world authority on Dinos, the guy who literally wrote the Dino Compendium, the Bible on Dinos. And it was Keith Blumel, who is a, a well-known author and expert on uh, vintage Ferraris in the Dino 308 range. So we had the dream team of judges. The team of judges came and they absolutely poured over the car. I mean, they did, I mean, normally they'll inspect the car for 15 minutes or so. They spent the better part of three hours going over the car, just trying to find anything they could with it. In the end, at Concorso Italiano, they told us that they wouldn't give us the award for, um, for the best Dino because you can't win more than one award. So they wouldn't give us the award for best Dino. They actually gave us the award for best restoration. And they privately told us, they said, we would like to give you the award for best of show, but I hope you can understand that, you know, if we give you best of show, the people who own the eight and $10 million Ferraris are going to set fire to this entire place. And we understood. I mean, it's, it's cool. It was, it, was an, it was an honor to be recognized in that fashion by those people. So we were able to get the award for best restoration. And a few days later, it was time to take the car to uh, the Ferrari Club National Meet. 
So fabulous, great turnout. There was over a dozen Dinos there. Now it was the time for the car to be judged to Ferrari Club of America FCA standards. One of the judges, which was a guest judge from Germany, was Matthias Bartz again. And then there were two other judges that were very uh, well known in the Dino community as experts in the field. And with about a dozen cars, it was a much bigger Dino turnout than you normally get at an FCA meet. We were a little worried. My brother's exact words was he looked at us after looking at the other cars. He's like, we're going to get creamed. And he's always been the kind of guy who thinks things are worse than the way they are sometimes. So I told him, I said, look, I said, I think we're going to do well. Let's just, you know, just do our best, show the car and let's, let's see how we end up. And so the judges came by and again, an incredibly thorough judging process. In the end, we were able to get a, a platinum award, uh, which is uh, the highest restoration standard that the FCA has. We won the best, uh, best Dino. And we were later to find out that we scored a perfect score of 100 points. And we were later told that no Dino had ever scored a perfect score of 100 points. And the best part of it all was that afterwards, a number of the really, really top restoration companies that do the cars spent some time really going over the car and they were they were genuinely complimenting and they, they came to us you know they treated us as equals and they said you know what what you guys did was every bit as good as what we turn out and we were so proud of that and to be able to do that it was it was really wonderful while everyone was loading the cars back onto their trailers to take them back to their climate control garages. We loaded the trunk up with luggage and my brother and my dad did a nice drive down the coast. And in, I guess, typical mic drop moment, we've retired the car from, from car shows and now just enjoy putting miles on it and making great memories. One of the deals that I made with my brother when we did this car is I said, we're gonna put an insane amount of work into the restoration of this car. Promise me that, you know, when we make the decision to sell it, the car is sold because we are emotionally done with it. We've had our fun and that we don't sell it because of what the car's worth. So we made that promise to ourselves. And actually when we finished the car and we showed it, someone offered us what would have been a world record price for the car on the spot. And we turned it down instantaneously. The judging of that car, the results, and not only the results, but just the validation from the other people in the restoration world really meant a lot to my brother and I. It certainly made my dad really proud. It was really, really cool to know that if we applied ourselves, we could do it. Because you think you can do it, but we actually were able to do it. And I thought that that was really, that was really rewarding. When you get a ticket, it might look something like this, but the first thing that you need to do is take a picture of that ticket and send it to 305 305. That will get the ticket clinic on your case immediately. They've got brick and mortar offices in Georgia, Florida, and California, but they can help you find a ticket no matter where you get it in the United States by helping you find a local attorney that will do everything they can to help you avoid costly fines, insurance premium increases, points on your license, risk of suspension, even jail time. They've helped me out with this ticket and many others and a lot of my friends as well. So check them out now at the link in the description below or again, text your ticket it to 305-305 to get the ticket clinic on your case. They are the perfect partner in your fight against any speeding ticket.